Hi, this is Sylvia and welcome to DIY Stamping Fun. Today I'm sharing a few tips on watercoloring with watercolor pencils. Um, and I'm going to use um, an image from the Blended Seasons stamp set. This, was just, this is a new set and it's only available during the month of August of 2018. Um, it's a bundle, it comes with coordinating dies um, with it and um, what it's called blended seasons because you could use this year-round there's Christmas images this could be a wedding fall images the sentiments are great there's thank you wishing you all the best Merry Christmas I just miss you you're the friend everyone wishes they had there's flowers there's sweet there's sprigs of leaves so you could really use this set um, year-round it's a um, if you get the bundle, of course, it's 10% off, but it's a really cool set. Um, I've been using it all month long and there's a million things you can do with it. So this is a set I'll be working with today. Um, so first tip, um, what you stamp with is very important. Um, most ink pads or our classic stamping ink pads are water-based. So if you're gonna watercolor, you don't want to stamp with a water-based or a dye-based ink. And um, these are dye-based, so you don't want to stamp with this to watercolor. You want to stamp with a solvent-based ink pad like Stazon. So um, when you do, you stamp your image with Stazon, your colors will not, or your, your stamped image will not run uh, when you add water to it. So that's what we're going to use today. Um, the other tip is what you stamp on is also very important. Um, you don't want to stamp on regular cardstock if you're going to add water to cardstock because it's going to warp and it's going to um, buckle and it will also peel up. You'll get like little fuzzies on it. Um, once your paper is warped or buckled, it's almost impossible to get it straight again. And then trying to adhere it to a piece of paper, it's almost impossible as well. So what do you want to stamp on? You want to stamp with water on watercolor paper or shimmery white paper. Um, both of these items can be found on page 192 um, of the annual catalog. You'll find shimmery white and watercolor. It's in the catalog. Okay, um, the other thing, your pencils. This is a new collection of pencils. Um, they're not in the catalog. Um, you can find them on my website. But if you have the first set of 12 pencils, this is an additional 10 and the colors don't repeat. So you're extending your color choices uh, with the watercolor pencils and they coordinate with the rest of the ink pads that Stampin' Up! has. Um, important, try not to be banging this around or dropping them because what will happen is you could potentially break the lead and then when you're sharpening, um, a lot of times the lead will come out. Um, that's never happened to me, but I'm really careful with that not to let it happen. Uh, also, try to keep your watercolor color pencils sharp so you can get into all the nooks and crannies um, in there. And when you go to sharpen your pencil, Move your pencil sharpener and not the pencil. And please don't put it in a school pencil sharpener. That'll just really wreck your pencils. Um, so all the supplies and the measurements to create this card are gonna be on my um, website or on my blog. And again, my blog is uh, www.diystampingfun.com. There is a G in stamping, stampingfun.com. Uh, and my blog post will be um, August the 13th of 2018. So look for that. Okay, so let's start. So what I like to do, uh, the three colors I'm going to use for my fall leaves are Crushed Curry, Cherry Cobbler, and Cajun Craze. Um, I typically like to start with the lighter color, so I'm going to use Crushed Curry. So, um, I'm not an expert on coloring fall leaves because in, the part, in South Central Texas, we didn't get very many fall leaves, so um, Google's a great resource. Um, 
to get an idea of what colors. So now I'm following with Cajun Craze. I don't know if you've noticed, but as I'm coloring in my image, I am going in a circular motion because I don't want the risk of having any little lines showing. Well, I did that on the stem because that's a pretty small area. But you can also layer on top. Um, so I'm using Cherry Cobbler on this leaf. And then I'm gonna come in with Cajun Craze and I'm overlapping the colors. I'm left-handed, so you're probably gonna get some shadows as I'm coloring in. And if you go outside the lines, that's perfectly fine. We're not doing coloring like when we did in school where you had to stay within the lines. This is art, so be free. Have fun. This is fun. Um, and then I'm coming in back. Okay, you don't need to be watching me to do this so, oh, the entire thing, but it goes rather quickly. You can come in, flick some color. All right, so the next thing is, that doesn't look too hot, you know, because you the paper, the watercolor paper is very heavily textured. So you can see where in some areas the color did not get into the paper, but that's okay. We're gonna use water brushes. These are our aqua painters. They, you get two to a pack and that's because they have, one is a thicker brush and one is a thinner brush. So you can choose whichever one you're more comfortable. I always make sure it's wet. Yep, there it is. And I like to start in the lightest area. And see, I'm just, see how intense, I'm hoping that you can see that, how quickly that changes. And water coloring is meant to be organic. But what I mean is it flows, it's free, it just kind of flows. If you notice, there's no color there but I have some on my brush, so I can then just extend that color. And again, if it goes out of the lines, that's really a cool effect. It's watercolor, it's supposed to do that. If you feel like you've got too much, you can always use your paper towel and uh, blot off if you have excess water. I have another little tip for you. If you decide you want to come back, one thing about watercolor is if you want to intensify the color or add more depth, you need to let it dry. You can let it dry naturally or you can use your heat tool to speed up the drying process. The other thing is if you want to add more color, more a deeper color, you can actually take your brush and take it directly to the pencil. And now you have a very intense color with it. Okay, that's it. Um, it's, it's just that quickly you can put a card together. Okay, so the other thing I did, and then of course, make sure that you just blot it off on your scratch paper or your paper towel. Um, some colors will stain your tips, but that's perfectly fine. As long as it, the water runs clear, it won't have an impact on your coloring. Okay, so now the other thing that I wanna show you is how you can do tone on tone. So, using the water-based or dye-based stamp, you can do tone on tone by just, I'm just gonna bring this image randomly and just turn it around. Maybe even over here. It, 
doesn't really matter. But you get a, that just kind of adds another layer of color. And then all I did with this is, I t this, I used the layering squares, the largest square, and then this is the largest scallop square from the same set. So just put them, glue them together, and then I just glued them all t on top of my card base. After I wrap some Baker's twine, or this is actually the linen twine. Okay, this card will be on my blog, like I said, August the 13th, 2018 post. Um, please go by and get the measurements and get the tips that I gave you today. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is if you use the host code, which is 2WJH2RZG, between now and August the 31st, I will send you the supplies to make this card uh, with the $30 minimum purchase before sales tax and shipping costs. Um, so thanks for stopping by. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Um, subscribe if you'd like. Uh, I'll be doing posting more videos. Subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you'd like to, to get blog posts, um, there's a pop-up where you can enter your email address and you'll get an email. I try to do a blog post three times a week and you can see what I'm working on. Thanks for stopping by. This is Sylvia. Goodbye. Have a happy crafting day.